Goodbye. Italiani, Ari, e luce spugne e giorno, 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 Park is a Brooklyn neighborhood. It takes its name from this park that overlooks New York Bay. The neighborhood was born at the turn of the century when immigrants poured into New York City at the rate of 1,500 a day. The population of Brooklyn doubled between 1890 and 1910, and neighborhoods like Sunset Park sprang up almost overnight. Sunset Park is located on the western edge of Brooklyn, between Bay Ridge and Park Slope. From a high ridge along 6th Avenue, residential streets slope down to the bay. North-South avenues are lined with shops. Greenwood Cemetery is a neighborhood landmark. It covers 478 acres of rolling hills and shaded paths. Two blocks away, the largest industrial complex in Brooklyn stretches along the waterfront. It's been over 100 years since the first immigrants settled here, but Sunset Park is still a melting pot. Old timers mingle with newcomers from half a dozen countries. Italian and Polish accents make way for Spanish, Greek, Indian, Filipino. New games are played in the park, but the old ones are still going strong. On the avenues, new signs have appeared next to old ones, adding new words to the exotic vocabulary of the storefronts. This complexity of a dozen cultures, of old and young, is the heritage of a city neighborhood. But the last 20 years haven't been kind to neighborhoods like this one, and the struggle to preserve these streets and houses is uniting all who live here. Marie Dunderevich is one of the old timers. I was born in 28th Street between 3rd and 4th Avenue. May the 2nd, 1897. Well, 4th Avenue was the boulevard. They called it 4th Avenue Boulevard. It was lovely. In the center where you have the grading now, grass was growing there and trees. And all along, going to Fort Hamilton, we'd pick daisies because there was fields. But there was no houses, there was lots. And we went right through. My father used to take us down to the waterfront. And down there on 28th Street was a big boathouse that they called Rudis's. And at this boat, in this boathouse, they sold crabs, lobsters, and we used to love to go there with my father. In those days, you could picnic on the banks of a lake in the park, or join the Sunday promenade in Greenwood, the most fashionable place to be buried in New York City. With the coming of the 4th Avenue subway in 1916, the settlement of Sunset Park was complete. In 20 years, the empty lots had been eaten up by row after row of houses. Behind these identical windows, half a dozen languages were spoken. Each ethnic group kept alive old country traditions as best they could. left their stamp on the neighborhood in another way. So many of them were carpenters that they banded together to build their own houses. But they didn't stop there. They went on to build four-story apartment buildings, the first co-ops ever built in New York City. 
Many of them are still occupied by the descendants of Finnish immigrants. The men who lived in the co-ops and houses on the slope found work at the foot of the hill. Between 1900 and 1910, a tycoon named Irving Bush turned this waterfront into the largest commercial port in the United States. He built a vast network of factories, warehouses, piers, and rail yards stretching from 28th to 65th Street. By 1930, Bush Industries alone employed 30,000 people. But in the 50s and early 60s, change came to the waterfront industries. Container port technology made these narrow piers obsolete. Ships started tying up on the other side of the bay at brand new ports in New Jersey. This depot was boarded up when trains were no longer needed to transport cargo. 19th century factory buildings were also abandoned as businesses moved to more modern sites outside the city. In 20 years, Sunset Park lost over 40,000 jobs. And the homeowners on the hill lost their sons and daughters to new jobs and new homes in the suburbs. As the old ethnic groups moved out, a new wave of immigrants moved in from Puerto Rico, Latin America, Greece, and Asia. The rapid turnover in housing attracted speculators who drew Sunset Park into a citywide real estate scandal. They bought up houses for as little as $3,000, then had them falsely appraised for $18,000 or $20,000. The houses were sold to low-income families under a mortgage insurance program run by the Federal Housing Administration. Families were duped into buying houses they couldn't afford or buying houses with broken boilers or inadequate plumbing. Eventually, they were forced to abandon the houses. The FHA paid off the mortgages in full while brokers, credit agencies, and bankers reaped the profit. Before it was stopped in 1972, the FHA scandal cost Sunset Park almost 100 abandoned houses. As blocks deteriorated, owners of apartment buildings lost confidence in their properties. The plague spread from street to street. In 1969, community residents took action. The Sunset Park Redevelopment Committee, or SPARC, was formed by 120 representatives of block associations, churches, and community groups. With staff support and office space provided by Lutheran Medical Center and grants and loans from five different sources, SPARC began to renovate abandoned houses like this one, then sell them to families that would bring new life to the houses the block and the neighborhood. People like Lydia and Sergio Ortiz. The first time I came, my boss brought me around. He says, uh, I found out about this project and they have two houses, 331, 333, and one, one of them's uh, you know, they for sale. And he says, I want you to go down with me and look at them. And we came over and we stopped right in front of the house. And you know, it was, it was terrible the way it looked. It was ugly. First time I saw it, I didn't. I wasn't that impressed. I didn't want to show it to my kids to my wife. I said, I don't want to show them this. All the kids are funny. They said, Oh, good, we're gonna live in a haunted house. <laughs> How many ghosts were there? But then uh, he took us on 55th Street and it had one finished there, you know. And he said, This is how he's gonna turn out. Well, I'm not gonna show it to my kids. I don't want to show it to my wife. So they said, Oh, good, we're gonna live in a haunted house. <laughs> How many ghosts were there? But then uh, he took us on 55th Street and it had one finished there, you know. And he said, This is how he's gonna turn out. Oh, I said, Well, it turns out like that. It's good, you know. Federal funds help offset the cost of renovating these houses. This means that they can be sold at market rates. A low down payment enables working people with steady incomes but with little capital to buy their own homes. These two houses actually were the eyes of the neighborhood, of this block. Since we took this house, there's about four or five houses that have been fixed, a new siding has been put up. When you own your own home, you know that if you have to keep it up, you're paying for it. If you let it run down, you're the one who loses the investment. I think it's the best thing that could happen to this neighborhood and the best thing could, that could happen to any neighborhood. Like giving the, uh, the small people like us uh, a push, a helping hand that we could have our own home. And I think it's, it's something beautiful. The first house was sold in 1973. 
19 more have been sold since then, with no defaults or vacancies. The program has now been expanded to include abandoned apartment buildings. Wilfredo Lugo, president of Spark, has been a member since the beginning. It's a unique body. It's local people, uh, regular people, everyday people that have got together and been able to understand the system on how to rescue houses. This is a fix-it-yourself, a do-it-yourself thing that we have done. Good evening. I'm Andrew Diorio, Chairman of Community Board Number 7. I'll now call this meeting to order. The 50 members of Board 7 represent almost every ethnic group in Sunset Park, old-timers and newcomers alike. Thank you, Andy. We are going to... In the past 10 years, They've learned the ins and outs of city government, how to solve problems and fight for neighborhood priorities. Parks and playground renovation. And of prime importance right now is the housing renovation. Joe, there's a building on the corner that I like demolish and for nice to be printed on for you know I spoke to you about it. The commitment of these people and others like them means that Sunset Park has turned a corner numbers of requests from community residents such as yourself. Prior it's just a growing interest in what's going on. The apathy that existed maybe 10 years ago is non-existent now. We've lived here for six years and in that time we've seen some interesting things happen. There are quite a few young couples that are moving in and buying brownstones and renovating them. With the growth of the brownstone movement, young couples like Alice and Bob Walsh are reversing the trend to the suburbs looking to old city neighborhoods to buy their first home. We didn't consider Sunset Park at first. We had gone to other brownstone neighborhoods that had received much more publicity. And then it was only as we found that those neighborhoods were beyond our pocketbook that we thought, well, gee, there are brownstones in Sunset Park. Why don't we check that area out? Packages into the house? OK. Here we are. In the with carry. both hands. Carry it with both hands. What happened with this house is we walked into the house and fell in love with it from the minute we walked in. We knew it was the right house. It was old, it had all of the original details in the house, and Alice fell in love with just the feel of it. I loved it. I really did. It had something that I, I knew that Bob and I would enjoy working on together and more or less creating our own home. The first thing that we did was um, immediately went to work on stripping the woodwork. What we did is we, we'd strip a little bit here, then we'd run to the next room and try and find out what kind of details we had in the next room. So we had a little bit stripped here, there, and everywhere. Most of the homes that we saw in this neighborhood were houses that had been in the families for a number of years, so that they were really in pretty good condition. And the prices were very affordable, and a range from about, I'd say, 28 to 38,000. This was in 1971. Unless you buy an older home, an old brownstone, you're not going to find features like we have in this house, and you're not going to find anything as solid. We were able to get an incredible amount of house for the dollars that we had to spend. In 1976, the Walshes and their neighbors started a brownstone restoration committee and organized house tours of Sunset Park. Today, these old homes are finding new owners who cherish them because of, not in spite of, their age. Turn-of-the-century industrial buildings are also being rediscovered. As part of its commitment to Sunset Park, Lutheran Medical Center turned this abandoned factory into a modern medical complex. And ships are coming back to Sunset Park. In 1961, the first container port opened on 39th Street, part of an $83 million waterfront development project launched by the city and federal governments. Twelve billion state dollars will open the old Bush terminal tracks and rail yards to modern container transport. As Sunset Park looks to the future, it will draw on all these resources, the waterfront industries, the sturdy row houses, tree-lined streets, and splendid park. But the greatest resource is the people who live here. They come from a dozen cultures, but they share the same commitment. A few years ago, a couple years ago, there were maybe five or six of us who were together on the restoration committee trying to get things done. Now 30 or 40 people will show up. There's a lot to go, but it's gradually getting there. 
There were three houses fixed on the block. They're renovating the house across the street very nice. Beautiful houses in Sunset Park. Untold numbers of beautiful houses in Sunset Park. It's going to be a very nice block. Now everybody goes out and they sweep. I'm thinking it's getting a little better. You know, I'll do my part, like I said. I live here myself, and I want to help the community and bring the place back to where it was 40, 50 years ago. There's an awful lot of dedicated people out there working to bring this area back to what it was. And I see the changes. As minor as they are right now, I can see, actually see it. And I think in the future, there are going to be dramatic changes here.